Hi, I'm Miguel. I'm from Barcelona. I'm a filmmaker, a screenwriter, director, producer. And I'm going to talk a bit about applications, about how, how film, uh, NFTs and Web3 can change uh, cinema. So cinema is, is the most centralized art form in, in the world. It's uh, governed by a handful of corporations, uh, especially in, in the States, it's governed by a handful of streamers and big studios. And in Europe, it's, it's mostly governed by a handful of governments, basically. Uh, you know, um, state funds that decide what gets funded and what doesn't, and hence what gets made and what doesn't. This means that it's kind of a very inefficient system in the sense that there's a lot of talent that gets wasted, a lot of films that never get made, and we as audiences don't get to, don't get to watch them. And decentralization and Web3 can change that, basically. Mm, if by, you know, with NFTs, we can, we can empower filmmakers by empowering audiences. That's the, that's the main idea. If audiences can get to choose what kind of films they want to see and have an incentive to choose, to, to choose that and support those films, then filmmakers that, that get supported by a community can get to make their films. And, and this means that we have a more diverse uh, cinema and that, you know, less decided by gatekeepers and by centralized uh, entities and more decided by what the audiences want to watch. So I'm going to show you a bit how, how we're doing that in, in my project, Kayadita, uh, which is going to be one of the first films ever to, to be funded by, by NFTs. And hopefully we can use it as a case study of, of how what I'm talking about is possible. So the, the project started, uh, my, the project Kayadita started in 2019 when I made a short film with the same title. And it's a film about, um, about a, a domestic worker from Latin America who works for a rich family in Spain. And it's you know, a story of female empowerment and liberation in that context of very stark class differences and injustices. Uh, it's kind of a social satire and also a character study of, of this protagonist. The, the, the short film was quite successful as a short film. It's a 15-minute film that you can watch on our website and went to a lot of festivals and was then acquired by, by HBO in, in the US for, for streaming. And, but, you know, I started working on, on, on creating the, the feature version of, of this same story uh, over two years ago and saw all the hurdles that go into trying to get a movie financed with the traditional and centralized systems. Even though the film got a lot of good actors attached and you know had a, was also selected at several development labs etc when it came to getting funding it, it all started to crumble and we got so many rejections from all of these centralized bodies that decide what gets made and what doesn't so be, because i've been in the nft space for for some time i i started as a collector and enthusiast in very early 2021 and i saw what was possible in, in the space and how so many artists were being empowered by by nfts I thought, you know, why, why can't this be applied to cinema? Of course, it, in, in cinema, it's a bit different because, you know, uh, an illustrator or, or other kinds of artists can just create the art in their home and then mint it and sell it as NFTs. But in our case, because cinema is so expensive, we need kind of the prior permission or the prior funding. So we need to convince people to, to give us the money so that we can make it and then, um, and then the artwork is created. So this, it's not the same system as with most kinds of art forms. But so basically what we did with the short film, I, I, I took the short film and fractionalized it into still frames and videos and created a collection of NFTs out of those. So there are 2,400 uh, still uh, NFTs and then there are some uh, of higher tiers that are videos. And basically um, created this, this collection on, on Ethereum on our own minting site that people could join and, and mint an NFT and 100 of percent of the proceeds go straight into funding the movie. So it's, it's in a way, it's kind of similar to a Kickstarter campaign. But of course, since most of you probably are aware uh, about Web3 and NFTs, you, you will understand how it's a much better version of Kickstarter, because what you get mostly is an NFT as a reward. And that NFT is, is an asset that is instantly tradable uh, and, and sellable on an open market. And so you, you have a, an asset that represents your stake in the movie so, somehow. And, and so it's very different from donating money for a film to get made and getting a t-shirt as a thank you. Um, in our case, the, the collection is, is structured into four tiers that come with different levels of utility. 
and all the utilities are, are based around the fact that you can experience the kind of the, the journey of, of making a movie uh, in this way. And also Web3 is also great at, at, at providing this experience as a very unique thing as well. For example, we are partnering with a company called Beam, which is a Web3 live streaming platform. And that, that allows us to do token-gated streamings and live streamings so that our holders can get to, for example, see the casting tapes as we're casting. Or to, or to see the rehearsals, or, or even live stream from the set, so that you know, we can have ca crew and cast interviews or things like that. And all of that can be token-gated, so that our, it's only available for our community. And, um, well, the tiers, I mean, I'm not, I don't gonna go into too much detail, but basically, the higher tiers which are now sold out were mostly, like, were giving you perks, for example, like coming to set, or, or becoming a producer in the movie, or, or things like that, or also access to physical memorabilia. And then the, the basic uh, tier, which is 0.18 ETH, um, gives you access to the film before anyone else and your name in the credits so that you, know, you can be a part of, of the historic film. And, and also access to the private Discord where we will share all of this in-depth behind the scenes process that I was talking about on, on Beam as well. Uh, but most, more importantly, one, one perk that is very important is the, the Kayadita DAO, which basically, because one hurdle that we have right now with projects that need funding via NFT is that because you can't fall into a securities um, issues, because if, if you, basically if you give revenue share to your holders directly from the film, then you are in, you are in trouble because you are selling an unregistered security, and, and that's, not, that's not legal. And so the, the way that we kind of spin that into something that we feel is also cool and, and gives participation in the success of the movie is the Cagadita DAO, which is, is a DAO that we will create once the film is, is finished and starts having an option to generate revenue. And so 50% of the whole revenue of the film will go into this community treasury that will be governed by all of the Cagadita holders. So essentially, this can become a, a decentralized studio in the future that if it accrues enough of a treasury, it can be funding future projects either by me or other filmmakers and start to you know, deliver on that mission of decentralizing cinema and having, less, uh, having more, of a, you know, more entities that are deciding and, and letting the community decide what gets made and what doesn't. Mm. We have a, a very impressive community of holders in, in our, in our uh, project. A few of them are right here, shout out. <laughs> Uh, basically, we have around 150 CryptoPunks that have, have minted Cayadita. Uh, uh, we've had amazing support from, from this OG community, including a lot of names that you will probably be familiar with, like, uh, and like Tony Herrera and MB, who are uh, OG Punks, and also you know, Cosmo de Medici and G Money, Zeneca, Farouk, and a lot of artists as well, which me as an artist makes me very proud because you know, Justin Aversano or Claire Silver or Snowfro are, are holders and supporters of the project. So that's also a great part of, of what NFTs do because they connect you with so many amazing people and allow us to all support each other in a very cool way. We also have a bunch of apes, by the way, so in, in, our, in our holders so that they don't, let, they don't feel left out. Uh, and also, I also, we also did um, a drop with Nifty Gateway because one of the feedback that we, ha that we have had from the community of especially film, film lovers that wanted to onboard into Web3 is, of course, we know that the technology is still, still quite hard to onboard newbies and, unless they are super willing to go through the process of, of you know, setting up a wallet, et cetera, et cetera. So we wanted to do something that allowed people to, to participate in fiat and also at a, at a lower price point. So we did this collection for one week on Nifty Gateway for $100 open editions, which also was a cool way to on board new people to get their first NFT. Because I don't know, I, a lot of you maybe have founded projects or have tried to sell NFTs and you will find that selling someone their first NFT is very hard. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier to sell, to sell an NFT to someone who is already collecting and is already in the space. Uh, so that's, that's also what we found and Nifty Gateway was great at onboarding new people because of the credit card payment solution. Mm. Our roadmap, we know everyone asks always about roadmap, and in our case, it's very simple, because 100% of the proceeds go straight into the movie. We are filming in September. We've raised a bit over $600,000 so far. We continue to mint so that we can get a better budget and make the movie better, but in any case, we're filming in September. 
So the, the roadmap is the movie. We will make an awesome movie that our holders are very proud to have made with us and that they can go on a journey with us in the process of making it. And then, you know, I'm now an NFT filmmaker, so I'm committed to delivering as much value back to our community as possible. And that's the beauty of Web3 as well. Like, there's so many things that we're gonna be creating during the process of making the film. Like, for example, now I'm drawing storyboards and I'm already thinking, okay, what's the coolest way and the best way that I can reward our holders with the storyboards that, that, give, that gives them as much value? And so there's so many things that we're gonna be creating during the process. And my priority is get this film made the best film possible, but then also have our holders be as happy as possible, right? So, because we all grow together now. And that's very cool, I think. And well, the Kayadita DAO, I already explained, and of course, it's also part of the roadmap, and it's a very interesting part because it kind of, as I was saying earlier, it kind of, the, the talk kind of ties back to the beginning again, because that's our, our future plans that, that help kind of extend this project into a wider thing that can help decentralize cinema. And, and it really needs it. We, I was just in, in Cannes at the, at the Cannes Film Festival, which is the biggest festival in the world. Sorry for Berliners, because the, the one here is also pretty big. But <laughs> and I was here, I was there, and I was invited to a few panels and talks about our our case, because it's the first fiction movie in Europe to, to be funded this way. And there's a lot of interest in the film industry because they see this as a as a way to have new avenues for funding, but also new avenues to connect with with audiences and to engage them in a lot, right? So that they are not only someone who buys a ticket, but they become kind of real fans of the project and follow it throughout. Mm, and so there is a real hunger and a real need for a revolution in, in the cinema industry. And hopefully we can spearhead that uh, and make it fairer and more decentralized. And that's it, it was very short, right? Uh, you can join the future of cinema. Thank you. And if you have any questions, if anyone has any questions, please uh, go ahead. Uh, I'd love to answer any. Yep. Before, before the film is made, what are the, in the NFTs that you are selling? Because you don't have any images to sell. Oh, like, yeah. Here, yes, but. Oh, in my case, because I have the short film, so these are, these are the images, some of, some of them. And they are all unique, which I think is, is cool. In, in other cases, I mean, you have to be creative for sure. Um, in terms of fiction films, the only other um, example was uh, Julie Pacino's project, uh, which is called Keepers of the Inn. And what she did was she didn't have a short film, so she got the actors and went to the location and put them in, in, in costumes, and like, like in, in character. And then they did rehearsals. And because she's a photographer as well, she took a bunch of photos. And then her collection were uh, 3,000 photos of that process. And so that's, but of course, yeah, I agree. In our case, it's, it's simpler because we have the short film, but if you don't, you have to be creative. Uh, maybe storyboards or, but of course, the art, the art is important, I will say that. If, if you're just minting a, a, a pass, kind of, like a ticket, that might not be as successful because people want to collect something that, that is meaningful to them and that not only support the film, but also have something cool to, to show. Some people are using the Cayadita stills in their, in their banners on Twitter, for example, or printing them. So, you know, it's cool to, to give people unique and cool art. So how did you promote the NFT in order to let people actually interested in minting? Great question. It's, it's, I mean, NFT marketing is very hard, and especially if you don't have a, a very large budget or are already a very big influencer. The, as I was saying, the target is kind of small because it's mostly people who are already collecting NFTs. But even if it's small, it's super saturated, right? As, as we all know, cutting through the noise is, is very difficult. And we hear about so many projects minting every day. So it's hard to retain people at, people's attention. In my case, um, I found that you know, a lot of the marketing was great at spreading the word and letting people know what we're doing. But um, because our project is a bit of a more, it requires a bit more of a sophisticated collector mindset than a lot of PFP projects that people mean because of the hype and FOMO, um, then you know, it's, it's better when we connect with people one-on-one -on -one or maybe in the, in the DMs and I tell people about the project and people kind of engage in that way, right? It's, it's harder for someone to just sit on their timeline and be like, oh my God, this is cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mint, just because they don't see the, the immediate profit um, possibility because uh, until, until we sell out, it's harder to, to have you know, direct profit in the, in the secondary market um, because we're still minting, right?
How many associate producers have been attached to this feature film by buying an uh, NFT? We have attached like 20 because there were 15 tier 3 NFTs and, and 5 tier 4 and both of those gave associate producer credits. And so, I mean, it's not exactly 20 because we sold out all of them, but uh, someone bought more than one. So it's around 20 so people. So what was the minimum uh, criteria or requirement for people who want to be associate at associate producer? It was 3 ETH for, 3 ETH for a tier 3 NFT. And now actually because we sold out, but we continue to want producers and a producer credit is something cool to have. We already announced, we also announced that anyone investing 3 ETH into the film in whatever tier can also get that, get that uh, producer credit. But it was cool also that we had some you know, great people like Justin Aversano uh, has one tier three, so he's a producer. But then also, uh, for example, one of our biggest whale, which is uh, Stravitz, is a, is a famous OG CryptoPunk because he minted f uh, eight of the nine CryptoPunk aliens. Uh, he has like over 200 of our NFTs. Uh, and, and then he gifted one of his tier threes, making a producer, to Mike Judge, which is a very big animation uh, um, artist, the creator of, um, I'm forgetting the name, uh, uh, this very huge uh, animation uh, show. And so he's now a producer as well because he was gifted one. So that's also uh, cool. And, and also the Nounce DAO was a big backer of the project. They, they supported with 6.9 ETH, which was a very cool thing because we, we put a proposal on chain to the Nounce DAO for them to support the film in exchange for becoming a producer as well and having some Nounce featured in the film. And, they, and, they, and the proposal passed with you know, a lot of uh, favorable votes. So that was also kind of historic in a way because I don't think there's been any f fiction film supported by a DAO with an on-chain proposal. Uh, so that was very, very interesting and very cool. Uh, why did you decide to go with the Web 3.0 route instead of like uh, Web 2.0 projects like Kickstarter? Great question. Um, so I, I already had the Kickstarter experience because the, the short film of Kayadita was funded with Kickstarter. I raised around 25 grand uh, with Kickstarter. And I just thought that NFTs are such a, a lot better version, basically. On, on Kickstarter, people donate uh, money and it's clearly just a donation. There's never any expectation or any, or any possibility of future returns, even if the film becomes a huge cult classic and, raises, and, you know, and makes millions in the box office. And you basically, you get a poster or a t-shirt that kind of is like a thank you and most people don't really want it. And it's also an, an extra cost for, for the creators. And, and you know, it's, it's, a weird, it's a weird relationship. And then you only have, you have an email of the person and maybe you can invite them to a screening uh, somewhere, but, but that's it, right? The relationship ends and, and they were backers and they support the film and they are happy that it's made, but that's it. Whereas with Web3, there's so much more you can do, right? Firstly, you get an NFT, which is a digital asset and is, you know, represents your, your stake in the movie in some ways. You're not really an investor and you have no right to profits, but you still uh, have this collectible that might go up in value in the future if the film is very successful, or, or both like uh, commercially, but also culturally, right? If it becomes well known, even worldwide, or also in the NFT community, uh, you know, as a niche because of being one of the first films to, to do this. So, you know, we've seen a lot of great projects that didn't, didn't give holders any sort of revenue share in their main business, but still went up a lot in, in value and, and people made a lot of money from them. Uh, and then, but then also the, the, the long-term community aspect of it is amazing because you, you get linked to your community in a different way because, because of Web3. So you can give them further NFTs, you can uh, token gate experiences, and we can have the DAO as well that, that binds them all together in the future to support future projects. So I think it's just a much better version. Thank you, everyone.